Hello, 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 and welcome to ER. This is ER Emotional Response Life Coaching with Ink Ivory. How are you today? I have the pleasure of welcoming Shakima Hollis and Derek Collins to the podcast tonight. I am honored for them to be speaking tonight and sharing with us our special Valentine's Day special on love and what do women really want and men really want. Hey, Shakima. Hey, Derek. Hey. Um, Without further ado, I'd like y'all, you know, one by one, introduce yourselves first to the audience so they know exactly the expertise that we're dealing with. Yo, you gonna go first. (laughs) <laughs> okay. Um, well, I, my name is Derek Collins, and I, I'm part owner with, um, of the Stress and Anxiety Center in Daytona Beach. Um, the business started with my father, and I kind of followed in his footsteps. Um, you know, we, it's really about, uh, you know, empowering the community and, you know, giving them services, you know, from people that they can relate to. Awesome. Awesome. And Shakima? Hey, everybody. I'm Shakima. Uh, it's Mary um, I'm right now a college student. I work on the Child Hospital in Philadelphia. Um, I'm 24. I'm not too experienced, but I'm excited to be here. <laughs> yes. Well, the reason why I picked y'all um, mainly because uh, I, I, you know, I'm connected with y'all on IG and just hearing y'all thoughts. I'm a firm believer. And what people post is a fragment of them. It doesn't show the full scope of who they are as individuals, but it's definitely a fragment of them that is that either draws people near or draws people away. Either you delete or block people, or you end up adding them and following them and and, and just becoming more uh, involved in their thoughts and what they post. So this is why I brought y'all on. So tonight's topic is, is you know, it can be touchy. It can be debatable. Um, the reason why we're picking this topic is to bring people back to love. And just hearing from Derek's angles, Derek's, Derek's married. And um, how long you been married, Derek? Uh, we're a little bit over two years. Over two years. And y'all been together for how long? Uh, we've been together maybe three to four. Three to four. Awesome. Awesome. So you, you're you talking <laughs> to a, uh, um, a, you're hearing the thoughts of a, of a man that, you know, has experience in dwelling with a woman for several years and knowing and identifying what love looks like. And then Shakima, she's a vibrant single female um with a very level head when it comes to emotions and thoughts and relationships so um without further ado what what, what's what's your thoughts when it when it comes to what women really want and what men really want Derek, we're going we're going first nigga i'm going first yeah okay um so i feel like since I am, you know, now 31, you know, I, I feel a little bit different than I did, you know, when I was in college. You know, the, the things that I wanted, the things that I felt that I wanted or thought that I wanted, you know, really aren't the same now. You know, um, so I feel like as far as for men, you know, we're going to we're gonna continue to mature, you know, and want different things at different parts of my life, you know, based on, you know, financial struggles or, you know, you know stability. You know, you, you, those things come come into play, you know, and, and when you're involving somebody else. That's true. That's very true. Did, like, well, how, how much did they change compared to when you was in your 20s? What did you really want? Uh, I didn't want to, I honestly, I played a lot of sports my whole life, so, you know, I, 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 my parents were smart. They kind of kept me busy, so I couldn't just run the streets and, you know, do what I wanted to do. So I did have more, I won't say a sheltered life, but I, you know, I, of course I snuck out and stole the car like most, you know, all that good stuff. But, you know, for the most part, I was busy. So, you know, when I got to college, it was more about experiencing everything, you know, you know, seeing new people from different places, you know, it's like, oh, 
too few there, man. I was too cute. And, you know, I didn't get a chance to see all these different varieties that I got to see at college. So it was really about experience and everything. Okay. Okay. And you, Shakima? Um, so for me personally, the question of what do I think women want, I think um, for women around my age, I'm 24, um, consistency is a major thing right now. Um, that's not that much you see too often. I feel like a lot of stuff is so easily accessible nowadays with the internet and everything. So it's hard to get somebody to be consistent and see what they could get what you're offering plus more on the internet from the next person. So I think that's a major thing that women my age, I think women in general struggle with getting from men because of how advanced technology is. Um, communication, but definitely, definitely consistency. Would you, do you, do you see that, Derek? The consistency? Yeah. Yeah, I do see the consistency has to be there because, you know, when somebody, for example, we can take that in so many different, um, you know, angles. You know, if, if somebody's showing a consistent, you know, they're reaching out to the other person, you know, versus the other person giving, you know, 50%. You know, after a while, that person's going to, you know, that's, that, it's hard to keep that up when you're not giving the same energy. Right, right. Yeah. Do, do, do you think, and just hearing it, and um, I could testify because I'm a female, consistency is definitely very major. Do you think most men really don't realize that that's really important to us or we don't we it's something that we need to vocalize from a female's angle um i don't think i don't know i don't think necessarily that they don't realize that we need consistency i think a lot of times they're just tied up literally with other stuff i think as time goes on some men before and they do realize it and they don't mind putting it at work consistency takes so much work and effort I think that's what scares people off and it's, it's just not you know it's not that much of not what I think They're, everything that you're offering me with less effort so I just I don't think that they're uh, I just think that they, some guys need time I think some guys need time to mature and some guys I think just never catch on to it hmm. what's your thoughts Derek yeah you know that's I can piggyback off what I said before you know <clears throat> a guy at 20 years old is it's not gonna. It shouldn't be. You know, if he is, he's. You know, he has to. He has his own personal issues. But you know, guys shouldn't be the same at from twenty to thirty. You know, at college, you know, I, I, I wasn't good for a relationship at twenty. It, it just wasn't going to work because I wasn't able to spread my wings. I didn't. You know, I didn't get a chance to to see life yet. You know, now I look at things a little bit different. You know, you know, uh, the easy and something that I would take at twenty, I won't take at thirty. You know, so like she said, you have to, you know, you got to, you got to go through some things. You got to have some, you know, heartbreak sometimes. It sucks that, like that. Sometimes you got to learn the hard way. But sometimes it feels like, you know, you, you might have to go through a few, you know, dating periods to, to, to understand what, what women work, want and what men want, you know, kind of, because everybody's different. So you might have been mm-hmm. in a relationship and it works one way and then you move to another one and it's not the same. Mm. Yeah. Y'all could y'all could join join in at, uh, whenever a thought comes in. Um, you brought up something significant, heartbreak, and it being a normal normal process of I guess evolving as an individual and in relationships just in general. How how do you address because it's a lot of people when it comes to heartbreaks now they responding in a very violent way or they responding right. in a very like. A, such a critical way it's like they're either anti-men or anti-women and it, 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 it's just it, it's getting brutal out here like women mm-hmm. are becoming more physical men are are, are are going to the deep ends to express their pain and it's just like how, how do we how do we approach our, our young women and men now that want to love because at the end of the day I think I believe I really believe everybody wants to love what's your thoughts um, I think as far as heartbreak go, I think the best advice uh, people just move on to that. And to me, in my opinion, a lot of people I've noticed once they're done with somebody, they just move on to the next person, whether they're fully healed with them or not. And they wind up damaging the next person or bringing baggage with them into the next thing. I think it's so important to give yourself time 
to heal. Like, it's nothing wrong with hurting. That's, people are so afraid to hurt. Like, you, it's okay to sit and fry it out and let them feelings out and take time to yourself and, you know, take, and realize what you took away from the situation or the relationship or the marriage or whatever it was. And realize what you want in the next thing that you move on to. That's when it's such a good time to realize. I think that's a major thing. A lot of people, you know, around my age, don't take the time to do. They just jump right on to the next thing. Like, it's giving yourself time. It's extremely important when it comes to a heartbreak. Mm. 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 Would you agree, Derek? Yeah, um, I do. I, uh, so, so, for example, after a heartbreak... Like you said, jumping into another relationship isn't, you know, at that time it might feel good because it's curing some of the, you know, the hurt feelings. But in the long term, it's not really curing it. It's really just putting a Band-Aid over it, you know. But, you know, it really goes back to a little bit more than just, you know, um, you know, getting over it. It's, it's about, you know, making sure that you are your best person you can be. You know, if you're the best person you can be and you're, you know, you you have cured your own insecurities or your own fears or the things that, you know, you you haven't got past, it's easier for you to, you know, deal with somebody else because, you know, when you have that, they might have their own as well and, it, and sometimes both don't mix. Mm-hmm. I definitely can see that. I definitely can see that. Heart, heartbreak is something. It, it's, it's a beast. You know, I, I could dig mm-hmm. back to my first um, initial heartbreak with my first love and it was earth shattering for me because number one, no one introduced me to what romantic love looks like. And so I figured it out on my own through dating the guy and and spending time with him. And there was no physical um, connection. It was just, I was 16 and I just liked him and he liked me. I like what I see. He liked what he's seen. And we talked on a regular basis. We both were very involved in school. But then we got to a point where we realized it it wasn't working. And when we realized it wasn't working, it became earth shattering for me. Because nobody told me that part of love is is the heartbreak. Mm Mm-hmm. And so, well, I, I mean, even if I, go ahead. Go ahead. No, and go so ahead. I, I, I did. Um, I could say with myself, I did battle with understanding what heartbreak is versus is it a depression or is it the end of life or you know, because it's a piece of you. It, you you feel you feel you feel knifed almost to an extent but then you regroup because i told him i was like well let's not ever talk again and he was like whoa 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 like we have a good connection let's stay friends and he he helped me identify with something not working out and realizing okay just because it don't work out that don't mean okay abandon life abandon a person or whatever like that he said let's still stay friends and we did you know but it mm-hmm. for that moment when i first felt it it was oh my god i felt like somebody yeah. took my heart and, and kind of knifed it a little bit go ahead what was you about to say Derek? What I was gonna say was that even even if, if you, even if somebody did give you you know that that key to that those feelings, it still wouldn't you still would have felt that pain that you did because somebody can explain something to you, but until you go through your on your own, you really don't really you can't really grasp it. You can hear them, mm. you know. That's how your mom said, "Yo, don't don't take her behind her, you know, somewhere," and then you end up going over there and you see why. <laughs> you know, you would have never really got that understanding until you went over there. Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. No, that's that's very true. That's very true. That's very true. What, what was you about to say, Sh- Shakima? I wasn't going to say, I was, I was going to say, um, I remember my first heartbreak. I didn't even realize it, it was over. You know what I mean? Like, mentally, I hadn't accepted it yet.